<laughs> there is no mountain. There is no mountain high enough. There is no valley low enough. I think you get the point. You're listening to the Ralph Romeo radio program. Christian Varley hosting. I am hosting here in the great New York City, the great metropolis. I love that name from Superman Metropolis. I am enjoying a delicious cup of coffee at three o'clock in the morning to keep me wide awake for you guys. Nobody else but you. And once again, I am going to go back to the theme that I started in the first half hour of this program. We are here to 4 a.m., so hang out. Or if you just want to relax and kick back, I want to really thank not only all the people I've encountered um, in the year 2015, some new people, and, and I'll probably try to run off a couple of names if I could remember. I'm terrible with names, uh, especially when it comes to um, any name spirit. I, mean, I got a pretty good memory, but I'll, um, everybody kind of looks the same, too. As you get a little older, I'm, I mean, really terrible a lot of times with girls' names. Maybe not even in a relationship way. I'm just like, I'll call somebody, uh, you know, five different names and, they, you know, want to smack me after a while. And Ralph always says it to me, God, you're not even calling the girl the right name. But so many of them have these names that are so similar um, or really funky names, you know, from like some other culture or something. You know, it's nice when somebody has a name like, uh, um, I don't know, Cheryl or something, just something a little simpler. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to start naming names because then I'll name somebody's name or leave somebody's name out. So, um, what were the names of the Charlie's Angels? It was uh, Farrah Fawcett, Farrah Fawcett, but that was not her, her name. I don't know what her name was on the show. She was married to Lee Majors, by the way. A lot of people forget that. And, um, I was re, I always liked Lee Majors a lot. I used to love the show, The Bionic Man. And, uh, I re- read recently, I think that, uh, Rock Hudson gave, um, Gave uh, Lee Majors his one of his big breaks. So you know me, I like to play nice, relaxing love songs. So I like those love songs. You know, nice, relaxing love songs. Metallica. Metallica. 2015, 2016 is coming soon. Metallica. Enjoy. Metallica. I'm getting to play a lot of the songs. I'm getting to play the guitar jams, too. You know, I'll tell you something. 
as the years have gone by, and I've gotten a little bit more, a uh, little less green, as they would say. I've gotten a little bit more, become a little bit more of a veteran here in, in age, hopefully, and uh, wisdom, too, and maybe my looks haven't faded. But um, as I've gotten a little older, um, I've learned to enjoy the uh, richer, finer things in life, like thrash metal, Metallica. Tonight, also... I'm going to get the opportunity before we get other things going. I'm not against playing gangster rap. Not that it's quite gangster rap. It's a little more like, um, this is a song I've always liked, and I get to play it. It's a little shaggy. It's shaggy. With even the voice, it's like the video. Honey came in and she got me red-handed, creeping with the girl next door. Picture this, we were both back naked, banging on the bathroom floor. How could I? So your villa, press us on a witness, all the screen on your pillar. You better watch your back before she turn into a killer. Let's review the situation that you call the pinna. To be a true player, you have to know how to play. If you say a night can be to say a thing, never admit to a word where she say. I used to claim I used to love baby, no way. But she caught me on the counter, wasn't me. She saw me banging on the sofa, wasn't me. I even had her in the shower, wasn't me. She even caught me on camera. Wasn't me. She saw the marks on my shoulder. Wasn't me. Heard the words that I told her. Wasn't me. Heard the screams getting louder. Wasn't me. She stayed until it was over. Honey came in and she got me red-handed, creeping with the girl next door. Picture this, we were both butt naked, banging on the bathroom floor. I had tried to keep her from what she was about to see. Why should she be leaving me when I told her it wasn't me? I never used to see I make the trick a low flex. I saw the else and favor you in the complex. Seeing is believing, so you better change your specs. You know she have a thing, I will if I think up from the past. All the little evidence, you better know the math. Quick by your hands, sir, go off it ass. But if you back a gun, you know you better run for us. But she caught me on the counter. Wasn't me. Saw me banging on the sofa. Wasn't me. I even had her in the shower. Wasn't me. She even caught me on camera. No. Wasn't me. She saw the marks on my shoulder. Wasn't me. Heard the words that I told her. Wasn't me. Heard the screams getting louder. Wasn't me. She stayed until it was over. Honey came in and she got me red handed, creeping with the girl next door. Picture this, we were both butt naked, banging on the bathroom floor. How could I forget that I had given her an extra key? All this time she was standing there, she never took her eyes off. Oh, 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 there it is. I know you've heard it before because I have played it before. That was the great Shaggy. I like that song a lot. That's um, I think I told the story before. I I was I sort of always liked that song, and it has more of a um, sort of reggae style, like a lot of the reggae music. Um, and uh, I think years ago, uh, one of my girlfriends or wife or whoever it was at the time. I think was having some affair on me or something like that and started playing that song a lot and uh, her affections weren't towards me anymore so that you could understand how maybe I wouldn't like that song. It had nothing to do with the song. It was that and some other song too out there and I was like, now I don't like that song. But years later, I said it was a good song so those actions, ill ill will actions of another person had nothing to do with the song. Uh, the song was still good. And um, anyway, so we're good here, and we are. You are listening to the Ralph Romeo radio program, and we're here till 4 a.m. Christian Varley hosting here. Again, I I thank you all for. Uh, I've been doing this now for quite a few years, I guess now uh, with Ralph. Ralph's been doing it for quite a few years, and Ralph's an, an outstanding radio host. Um, in a sea of people that are the same, I think we try to be. A lot different, and um, Ralph and I get along very well. Um, I guess we're a little bit like uh, some of those old-time comedy teams. Um, it was it like Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis? Um, I guess Ralph will be uh, Dean Martin, and um, Dean Martin, and I'll be Jerry Lewis. Hello. Um, but uh, if you want to join us tonight, two one two two one nine nine six nine five for our end of the year special. 
uh, at least mine, because uh, I'm, I have a busy week coming up, and um, I will join you again in 2016, unless something, unless I sneak in for a brief thing. But I think this is our end of the year special. I'm sure Ralph may catch you during the end of the week or something. So um, feel free to contact him. Um, I don't have his personal cell in front of me, but I know he always gives it out. I'll have to look at look at it maybe later. I'll pass it out. But again, if you want to join us live here, two one two two one nine nine six nine five and we could talk about whatever you like and i think about our troops um people that are so underpaid now you know if you don't want to send uh them over to go fight somewhere fine but at least pay them and take care of them and make sure they're properly promoted and that they are taken care of number one and that number two their families and other people are taken care of that should be the number one priority one of the most important things especially if these budgets um, a lot of them still have astronomical budgets where they do give to defense and to the military. Um, then make sure that that gets down to uh, the the average man and woman that's out there actually in the uniform. Um, and stop telling me about all these other uniforms that people are wearing, you know. Oh, yeah, the, the, the so-and-so in this uniform or that uniform. I don't really care what uniforms people are wearing. I'm talking particularly about our, our soldiers and I'm not saying they're always perfect, but most of them I have worked with them are fantastic men and women that are actually great, great people, and they're peacemakers. And they don't go around hurting people. They don't go around harassing people. Most of them are a real blessing and would do anything for you and anything for this country. So I'm sending that out uh, and telling you soldiers, men and women out there, thank you. But not to harp on that on that thing. One thing about Hillary Clinton, though, a funny little thing is, in the debates, apparently she's been leaving a couple of times. I don't know if it's during commercial break or something like that. So Trump called her on that one, said, you know, you want this woman in, in office to be president. She can't even stand on stage for a while. Uh, I'd say one thing about that. Um, you know, anybody could stop and maybe go to the bathroom or they want to go take a break. That's fine. But it just seems a little bit odd. Um, I can't think of one thing uh, she herself has accomplished, um, even a senator or whatever. And I don't think because her husband did maybe a half decent job i disagree with a lot of things clinton did but at least the economy was was decent in those days and he seems somewhat presidential um somewhat but i don't think that should be any reason to put uh his wife in office you know that's kind of silly that's almost like saying thomas edison was a great inventor and let's uh let's let his wife run all the inventions i don't, I don't think it works that way so but again go trump and as far as the other candidates if you want to be, i don't really want to discuss politics too much here um, because something much more important than politics is happening out there, and that's the new Star Wars, which I told you I'd get to a little bit. The Force Awakens has been released last year. Brilliant, uh, last week, excuse me. Brilliant timing on that. Brilliant, brilliant timing on that. And J.J. Abrams, uh, who's a good director. I, I think he's a pretty good director. He's a little bit like, I, I don't want to go too far. He's sort of a, a little bit like a modern Spielberg a little bit, um, sort of a cross between Spielberg and Lucas. Um, but he um, he did the two Star Trek movies before this, and I think he did a pretty good job with them, a pretty good uh, retelling of the Star Trek series, which kind of tipped its hat to the old uh, Star Trek series. Um, I saw a trailer for the third one coming out, with he, which he's producing. He's not directing. It looks really campy, but we'll see. But But back to the new Star Wars movie. The Force Awakens. Uh, he seems like he's got a pretty good grip on it, and he went back to the original three movies. And in this movie, it seems again, which I don't think I'm really spoiling anything, it seems like, I think everybody knows by this point, that Luke Skywalker, it looks like, has maybe gone to the dark side, perhaps. I heard he was going to train uh, one of the young Jedis, and I kept watching the trailers even weeks ago, and I said, where's Luke Skywalker? Where's Mark Hamill? If they have him in this movie, how come I haven't seen him in any of the trailers? So I caught on to that pretty quick. And then when I heard he, taught, he turned to the dark side, I said I should have figured that right away. But I have not seen it yet, so I cannot confirm nor deny that Luke Skywalker, the actor Mark Hamill, has gone to the dark side. But there's a new character in there, a new dark figure called Kylo Ren, who's getting sort of mixed reviews. Most people like him, but he sort of looks like uh, Snape, I think. And when he takes his helmet off or something, he sort of looks like... Um, that actor from Harry Potter was a really deep voice. They all have deep voices from Harry Potter. The guy, uh, Dumbledore, I can't him right now to find the range to find Dumbledore. But he talks with a very deep voice. However, 
the one thing that I really have always loved about the Star Wars movies, um, besides the heart and soul, I want to talk a little more about that, is the man himself who has done some of the greatest themes. I love the musical compositions on these movies, and that is uh, John Williams. John Williams, I love... A, a movie needs... Most movies need great music and the sound and the music believe it or not is 70 percent of the movie you don't even realize it but it affects your emotions when you watch a scary movie um turn down the sound and you'll find that about 80 percent of the times it's not as scary you know when all of a sudden they turn around and there's a mirror and there's a figure behind it and they make the sound it scares the heck out of you but john williams on a lighter note uh is was just a brilliant brilliant composer and he did the music for Star Wars and for Superman. And so many of the Spielberg movies, one of the reasons why they're great also, besides I do love Spielberg, I got the opportunity to work with him on Munich. I think I got my 10 seconds of fame there, so hopefully I'll get the chance to work with Mr. Spielberg again on a bigger note. Uh, I do enjoy a lot of his work. Um, but he's John Williams, the composer, has done so many of the scores to Steven Spielberg's movie, and for the uh, George Lucas' Star Wars movie. I think he also did the Indiana Jones too, uh, Indiana Jones movies, too, as well. I think they're making a new one, by the way. This The guy who works on the new uh, Jurassic Park movie, I think they're thinking about casting him as the new Indiana Jones. But before I get to Mr. John Williams, um, Harrison Ford came back along with Carrie Fisher and Mark Hamill. Like 30 years later, they reprised these roles in the Star Wars movie, and I thought that was really great of J.J. Abrams, or if George Lucas had his hand in that, I thought that was really great to do that. It turned out to be a great thing, but I think um, Harrison Ford, who has already been a big star, he's gotten older, I think he's about 71 or 72, he, he made out like a bandit. He made, I think, like another $20 million. Hopefully he got himself some percentage points off that big thing. That's worth it for that particular project, because it looks like it may turn out to be the biggest movie of all time, or certainly like in the top three. It has made a half, over a half a billion in like a week's time that is astronomical it's the number one opening of all time i think it it's opening weekend i think it made 260 million dollars those are some nice numbers so hats off to the star wars series and back to superman which was john williams i have a little piece here let's see how it plays i think you'll like this uh maybe maybe not let's hear it here you go mr john williams
That is really beautiful. That was Maureen McGovern, and I believe that uh, John Williams wrote all that beautiful music there. There's so many great music movies out there, and um, uh, you know the Oscar race is coming up too in 2015. And um, let's see what's in the uh, 2015, 2016 Oscars that'll come up in February or March. I think we have The Godfather. Is there Gone with the Winds in the race? Uh, what other great movies do we have? Titanic. Oh, no, no. Those were from years ago. I don't really know what beautiful movies we have. Do we have any beautiful movies this year? I don't know that there's that many, that many beautiful movies. But that was from the original Superman with uh, the late, great Christopher Reeves and Margot Kidder, who is still with us, obviously. But uh, uh, Christopher Reeve passed away tragically years ago and uh, just just a beautiful uh, he played such a beautiful character such a beautiful um, job as um, as Superman Richard Donner by the way directed that who also directed uh, one of the early episodes of the Twilight Zone which is I think one of the pound for pound the greatest series of all time you can think of some other ones but the Twilight Zone is the greatest series of all time if you don't have Netflix I encourage you get Netflix, because Netflix has got some of the coolest stuff. Uh, sometimes there's some really bad movies on there. Like you watch, some, you watch. You, they used to say to me in film school, you can learn just as much uh, from watching a bad movie if you're going to direct something. Watch a bad movie, and you'll learn maybe what not to do as watching a good movie. The same thing with bad acting. You can watch somebody who's really uh, uh, bad <laughs> acting. But when we were trained. Uh, how to act. Uh, I, I was trained as a method actor. And, but the, the next movie I wanted to mention, too, was Heaven Knows, Mr. Allison, which was 1957. Also, you can catch that on Netflix. And it was with Robert Mitchum and Deborah Carr. Deborah Carr was in From Here to Eternity and had that famous scene with Burt Lancaster, uh, the famous beach scene where they're both making love to each other on, in the water, you know, on, on the beach. I mean, they had bathing suits on Burt Lancaster and his tight black bathing suit which i like to wear those tight bathing suits i wear them too tight i think for nowadays uh, myself um i one time walked out in like a semi speedo and everybody looked at me like you can't wear that anymore i mean i i'm pretty thin but but you just can't really wear the speedos too much anymore the worst is when you see some big fat guy with a big gut wearing a speedo you know a big hairy guy or something i'm not really a hairy guy but some of these guys come out with a big hairy back and a big beer belly wearing a speedo that's the worst and they're like what do you want what do you want? Two horses walk into bar, and the horse says, ah, "Why the long face?" Um, so anyway, I was talking about Robert Mitchum. The thing about Robert Mitchum in this movie with Deborah Carr, he plays a marine who is shipwrecked uh, when his, I guess, navy vessel was blown up. He sh- gets shipwrecked onto this island, and he meets, of course, on this Japanese-occupied uh, island, a nun, an Irish nun, played by Deborah Carr, and it was directed by the wonderful John Huston. John Huston was a magnificent actor, the same, and he was a great director. He directed The African Queen and a couple of great movies with Humphrey Bogart, as he would, uh, John Huston would say, there'll never be another Humphrey Bogart. I love John Huston. In fact, he played the, uh, he did the voice of, of Gandalf in the cartoon in like the 1978 version of the Lord of the Rings, an early version of Lord of the Rings, and or maybe it was The Hobbit, one of those cartoon versions, but John Huston had a great voice. But he directed this movie with Robert Mitchum, and it, the thing about Robert Mitchum, Robert Mitchum always had this edgy side to him, and he was a real physical actor. But what touched me about it, too, is near the end of the movie, um, they're not sure what's going on. There's a sea, sea battle, and um, Deborah Carr... Uh, says to Robert Mitchum, uh, the Japanese are coming, and um, he said to her, the Marines are going to come onto those beaches soon. She goes, do you think they're coming? She go, He says to her, I know they're coming because they're Marines, and that's what they do. And she says, oh, is that good? And he says, yes. He says, but a lot of them are going to die coming onto those beaches. And she said, is that so? That's very sad. And he said, yes. And she said, why is that? He said, because of these guns that are down there, these four big, big guns that they're going to hit some of those Marines with. So she said, oh, that's so sad. And she said, it was too bad we couldn't do something about that. And then he said, maybe I can do something about that. And maybe I could change that. And it it kind of touched me when I thought about it. It sounds kind of funny, but it almost brings a tear to my eye. And in the movie, he decides to go down there and he risks his life near the end of the movie. And he pulls... um, the explosives and the ammunition out of those big big guns that they were going to fire 
at the Marines, and he saves so many of their lives. And he gets hit. He survives, of course. But it was so beautifully done. He, he felt God. He says, I feel God telling me to go down there. She says, are you sure it's God? And he says, I think so. And he went down there. And anyway, in the movie, he, he stops them and helps the uh, American Marines. Uh, this is a John Huston movie I'm talking about, Heaven Knows, Mr. Allison. But I, I just thought it was a beautiful thing and about what we can do in life. We can do so many things. And um, movies are based on reality. Just a fantastic actor. The other guy, um, somebody was comparing, used me in the same sentence, which I really appreciate that. My friend, great friend Jim out there, Jim Waitsman, uh, thank you so much, brother. He was, we were talking, I was, I had a, uh, a quick photograph I got over by Radio City Music Hall, the Christmas stuff. I got a quick photo op the other day over there. And uh, a couple of people were saying some nice stuff about that. They were saying it's very Matrix like, and I appreciate that. And Jim said, uh, Are you staying in character? And I said, Well, I'm a method actor. I always stay in character. And um, he said, You're like Daniel Day Lewis. And I said, Thank you very, very much for even putting me in the same sentence as Daniel Day Lewis. I love. Daniel Day-Lewis, he's a true modern-day um, method actor. And he's been in some movies that uh, one of them would have been like The Gangs of New York, which it, not, it wasn't a bad movie per se, but it wouldn't have been uh, that likable, uh, except that Daniel Day-Lewis, with this crazy mustache he had, and he was just fantastic. He took this part that you would have thought would have been horrible, and he made it great. And that's what a guy like Daniel Day-Lewis does. And I wanted to say that the upcoming Oscars just looks... Uh, horrible, <laughs> you know, I, I don't know, maybe there's some gems in there, but none of these movies in the last decade uh, have really, in the last like 20 years, there's been nothing really great, there were such great movies that came out in the 70s, and and obviously before that, so many great, great movies, we don't really have that anymore, occasionally you get a good one coming up, maybe Titanic was decent, but they don't seem to, to last um, the uh, span of time, let's see if we can get it in, before we close out this great uh, 2015. And God bless you guys so much, and thank you. Graham and listening to me, Christian Varley, hosting here. And here's a little Tina Turner, Heroes. something better out there thank you the great tina turner from the movie um M mad max thunderdome the great mel gibson thank you guys god bless you thank you i'm signing out for 2015 see you in 2016 god bless you and as douglas MacArthur said as the grace of god has given me the ability and the power michael mcdonald take us out god bless you guys thank you christian varley here god bless you.